Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make Santa's workshop. So this is what I think the North Pole looks like. I'm going to turn the lights on in a moment so you can see it in more detail, but I just wanted you to see it all lit up and just how pretty this looks. It's just, I'm so pleased with how this has come together. You that follow the mo a lot of you that follow me now for some time know that I do like to make these kind of little scenes, little houses. I think they can make lovely gifts. If you've got some grandchildren that you know will love something like this, then I think it would make a lovely gift. But this is for me to enjoy, something that I will bring out each year. It's a storage box. There's lots and lots of space inside this. So I'm going to turn the lights on now and I can show you it all in more detail. Okay, so here it is now. You can see, I've still got the lights on, but uh, you can actually see how it all looks. It's really pretty. It's so, so cute. So it's kind of in between, you know, the Christmas cottage, a gingerbread house, just a house in general. You know, if you take all the Christmas elements away from it, you know, this could be a... <laughs> a nice centerpiece for someone's you know a new home party or something so there's lots of ways that this can be changed and the whole playlist that I'll share now of other houses that I've made you can change them for all different kinds of occasions so you know don't think because I've made this as a Christmas scene that yours has to be because it doesn't you can do anything you want but I can just bring up it's really hard to get in camera a lot of this so the video I show you all what you need to make the actual shape but a lot of the detail I end up talking through purely because I just can't get it in when I'm, I'm actually making it all so but you can see all the lovely detail lots and lots of snow on the rooftops we've got a little wreath on the door there's a letterbox there as well just catching in the light little Christmas trees we've got Rudolph and another reindeer and they've got little scarfs on we have some little logs there for the fire then we have welcome to the north pole and it's on a candy cane and then you have another tree now the one thing I'm waiting for still to arrive is more of these tiny little presents I want lots and lots of presents on this and I mean lots it's the North Pole the elves have been busy you know there's lots and lots of presents to get out so I want piles of them everywhere but I've just really struggled to find them on the high street so I've ended up ordering on them online but they still haven't arrived so once they arrive and I'm happy with them and I would recommend them I will add the links below this video and also on my blog so you won't find them there at the moment but they will go up eventually um, if that's what you want. Some of you might already have those. They used to sell bags of them, you know, that was really easy to get, but no, I've struggled this time. Anyway, like I said, I have got some. So the storage side of things. So on the back, I have my light box. So the lights go on and off. You can just see them flickering there. And then, so basically you just open it up. It's got magnets and then inside you have a large storage section. Now I've still to cover the insides of this, I will add the measurements to all of that in my blog, but I didn't show it in the video because I just don't want to keep the video too long and I needed to get this kind of done and dusted, so but I will be doing it. And then you've also got storage on each of these houses here, so you know loads of room. I'm going to be using this for candles, matches, maybe I'll put some sweet treats as well, maybe in either side here or either side I'll have like miscellaneous and in the middle I'll just put lots of sweets in there. But it's, it's lovely. It's turned out loads better than I imagined. I kind of draw these things up, I do a little sketch. I think, you know, I have a vision in my head. But um, until you start doing it, it's, yeah, it's just lovely. I'm so, so pleased with this. So, yeah, let's get straight into the tutorial. Okay, so I'll talk you through all the grey board and the main case first. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another one of these. So these are one of the little side houses and then the main house in the middle. So... Um, you can see there how it opens inside and this is all ready for us to decorate and make it look lovely. So I'll talk through the main one first. So you want two pieces of grey board, chipboard, you know, something that's thick. You can use the white foam board as well. So it will work. You just cut the same, you know, measurements. So if you've got that, because I know some of you will have that from when you made the advent calendar, then you can obviously do that, use that as well. But these are eight by eight. So two pieces of eight by eight, and then two pieces of four by eight. And these are going to be the, for the sides. That's for the main part. And then to fix it all together, I've got these hinges and these are two by eight. Okay. And you want four pieces. So that's all for that piece. And then for the smaller buildings, either side, so you're going to want eight pieces that are four by five and a half and then eight hinges 
that are two by five and a half. Okay, and I'll talk through the, no, I'll leave the roof for now. Let's just get these pieces done and then I'll give you the measurements for that as we go. As always, everything's always listed in my blog. So what you want to do first of all, so the way that we construct this is exactly the same way as we construct the big one as well. So you've got your four pieces, so you want them all in portrait orientation and then you want to take one of your hinges and I'm going to pop, I'm using cloud glue for all of this project. This one here has already become a solid piece, you know, that's going to last a very, very long time. So I'm really pleased with that one. So I'm just going to pop a layer on each side of this. In fact, I'll do one at the minute. Let's just do one just so you can see how it starts off. And then you're just going to sit this right in there, bring up the side and just kind of push that into place. So you've got your hinge on a right angle. You might find it'd be useful to keep your bone folder at hand just so you can make sure you keep all your edges really nice and um, crisp. What I might do is just feed in a little bit more glue just along that side because obviously it is a two, two to three mil width. So there is, you know, an area there for this to stick to. So just bring that up onto the side there. And then I'm going to get another one. And then I'm going to pop this one in here. Grab another one and just do the same, okay, with this other piece. Okay, so you should have two pieces like this and you want to make sure that that is starting to stick to the side of the grey board there, okay? Now these next pieces you're going to stick, you're going to put glue on the hinge and stick that in, but you want to make sure you stick it on top of this one. So you don't want it kind of falling down the side like that, you know, inside there. Don't pull that apart, you want that to be, like I said, stuck to the side of that grey board. This you're then going to stick on top of it like that. So what I would say to do is just run a very thin amount of glue and this goes for the foam board if you're using that because the foam board's much thicker I think that's like five five or six mil so I'm going to pop I've popped glue just on the side of that one and then I don't want to pull this apart so I'm just going to run some glue in this one here and then just sit that on top and bring around that hinge and once you start to bring these in you can start to then kind of put it upright and you can push against it, it's a lot, a lot easier, but can you see that this one is stuck on top of that one there? Okay, so just give that again a minute. And it will all, once it's all together, it will hold its shape as well and then the glue can really set into that, um, that shape. So then with this one, if I just hold that one there for a minute, and just pop glue again on the other tab or hinge like so, so just put some more glue just in there and then another bit and again just sit that one on top of the other one and bring up that hinge you'll probably find it's better to do it like this when you've got it upright so that's that one and then this one here is going to go in like that and again this piece is going to stick on top of this one so I would Rather than run the glue down there, I would just put a thin amount on top of the grey board there. Like so, and then cover your sides as well. Okay, and then that one just over there, like so. Just let it initially kind of grab and then just kind of leave the collow. Sometimes it's good to just leave it for maybe like two minutes and then go back and push it together because it can go very um, stringy and that's when it's at its most tackiest and then if you kind of bond it again it, you get a really really good kind of um, like join with it so I'm just going to leave that there for the minute but you want to do that twice with the little ones so again you'll have one like this and you want to repeat that with this piece but the only difference is because that one there you were working with four equal sides with this one here You've got your front and back and then these sides. So you're going to put a hinge on both pieces like that and stick it together and a hinge on those two pieces. So I'm going to go and do that while that's kind of still drying. Okay, 
Okay, so that's now starting to set really nicely. And then these two here, you can see there what I've done, just put the hinges on those sides. And then you're gonna do the same thing. So this time, you're gonna stick these pieces on top of the eight by eight piece like so and bring up those hinges and then stick that one on. So I'm gonna go and do that. There's that side done. Okay, and then I'm just gonna stick those ones over the top like that. So again, I'm just gonna run some glue on the top of this piece and then on all the sides. Okay, so now we've got this piece and we've got this piece here as well. So I'm ready to start putting the roof on now. So we'll go through the measurements and a little bit of scoring for these. So I'm using the craft card. This is 300 GSM craft card, the same as what I've used on the hinges. So for the smaller little houses, you're gonna need four pieces that are four and a quarter by five. Now the reason I've done the four and a quarter is because on this one here you'll see there's a little overhang on this side but not on this side because this one is going to go up against the side of the house. That's um, why I've got the overhang on this side of the roof. So that's why it's four and a quarter. Okay then along the five inch side you want to score at one inch. Okay and that's going to be for the top of the roof and for our kind of closure. So eight, um, four pieces of that size. And then these are the hinges that are inside. So this is the same mechanism that I done for the bird box. So you'll see there, there's a separate piece here and that allows us to be able to open and close that. And that's how it's gonna be for all of them. And this is two by four. So it's the exact width, width of this piece. Along the two inch side, you just wanna score at four inches. And you, again, you'll want four in total, two on each house. So that's that one, and then I'll give you the measurements for the bigger one. Let me just get my other scoreboard. So for the roof for the main piece, you want two pieces that are five by eight and a half. And along the five inch side, you're, you will score at one inch. You do that on both pieces. I've done a quarter inch overhang on each side. That's why you've got the eight and a half on that one. So they've both been done. And then again, you'll want two hinges that are two by eight. So just the width, and again, along the two inch side, score at one inch, fold and burnish, okay? I'm gonna show you what to do on the little one, and then I'll do exactly the same on the large one. So with the hinge pieces first, you wanna get both of them, and you're gonna stick them onto the front and back, just one half, so the other half is free, like that. So it's really easy, just put your glue along the bottom section there, because you've got your score line, you know exactly where to add your glue, so I'm just gonna add glue on there and then what I would say is fold it down onto the back and fold it across onto the top so you know you've got it right on that fold so you can see there what I've done and that's the back piece this is all going to get covered with our pattern paper and all kinds of things and snow and this is just getting your basics down just get that structure in place Okay, so now we've got this hinge for our roof, and then you want to do the same on the opposite side. Okay, so that's that one, and then I'm going to do the same with the larger one while I've got it all here. Okay, so while that one's drying, I can go back to this one. Fold and burnish the top pieces of the roof because they're going to go together like so, just the same as the bird box. And then what you want to do is stick them onto here with a one inch overhang. So the easiest way to do that is just turn them upside down and I'm just gonna grab my, my ruler and on my board here, I'm just lining it up with this section. These are one inch squares. So I just wanna come up one inch and just draw a line and then come up again another inch and draw a line. And that's where you're gonna add your glue within that section there. So that's your one inch overhang and then that's the rest of the roof. That's if you wanna have that much overhang. You might only wanna have a quarter of an inch, half an inch. You might wanna have a much taller roof. It's entirely up to you. That's just the way that I've done it. So again, with this one here, just scoring a line at one inch and two. And it just gives you that, um, that area that you know you can add your glue to. So all of that there is where I'm gonna be adding my glue there and there and I'll do the same for you on these ones so again 
you want to make sure you got it in your portrait orientation and then just at the one inch and the two again glue all in that section there and then this one here glue all in there so I'll show you how you stick it down with the small one and then I'll go ahead and carry on with the larger one. So I'm just going to pop glue in there. Okay. And if you just bring this one down, so this is obviously the top, you're sticking it this way up so that's you know the top of the roof and just lie that hinge within that section but you want to make sure that you've got one side overhanging and then the opposite on the other one. So I'm just pulling that across. So you can see I've got my overhang here, but it's nice and flush with that side there because that one's going to stick on that side and that one is going to stick on that side. Okay, and because they're exactly the same, don't worry if you stick them both on the op on the same side. As it, you know, so you pull this across on this one and you do the same on that one. Just flip it around and then it would work. So as long as you make sure you've got one side where the roof is flush with that hinge and then overhanging on the other part there. Probably should have rubbed that pencil out maybe, but hey ho, no one's really gonna see that. So again, with this one here, with this one, you can't see now because I've got that piece, but I'm just sticking it down again. It's nice and flush with this end of the tab, but there's the overhang on that side. That's that quarter inch. Again, once that all comes together there, just make sure it all squares off nicely. Yeah, I think it's going to look really, really cute. So I'm just going to make sure they're nice and secure. But with this one, you want an even overhang on both sides. You'll have quarter inch on both because this won't interfere because it's lower down. But again, that overhang does make a difference. I think it just, yeah, it just finishes it off nicely. So with this one here, you just want to make sure you've got it kind of centered really. So I'm going to stick these two down. So this is what you will now have, is these three buildings. Don't worry about the bases, that will all come when we stick the base down. But this part is actually relatively quick. It doesn't take long to put all this together at all. It's the deciding on what papers you're going to do, you, sorry, you know, the, the theme even, because you might not be doing Christmas, and I need to go and think about now, like, the colours that I want to use and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go away, get all that together, and then I will be back. Okay, so I have done quite a bit, but I'm going to talk you through everything. So I've started doing all the detail on the roof. It's the same way that i done the bird box. So if you click up here, I probably shared this playlist earlier on, but if you click on that, you'll be able to see all the other houses that I've made. So you can maybe take some inspiration from them and use it in this. So I've done both sides. Now I haven't done the Nouveau, this is using white Nouveau drops. I haven't done it on the back yet because I'm worried I might run out and I need to order another one. So I'm just going to do the front of all three and then I'll do the backs if I've got enough like I said, until I've ordered another one. But I've also then just sprinkled some of this beautiful, it's like diamond frost. It's like the Cosmic Shimmer Diamond Frost. This is from B&M. And it just gives a really lovely, just see it picking up in the light there, sparkle finish. So what I've started doing, and I've just realized I've actually done the back of that one because that goes on that side actually, but then I've done the back of that one, so it doesn't matter. I'll do that one anyway. <laughs> Ignore me, I'm yabbering on to myself. Right, so let's talk through the patterned papers and what you need to cover everything. So this one here, you'll see I've covered the front and the side, and what you'll need for that is a piece of eight by eight. So I've got this paper here. I've got a feeling it's from the Little Red Robin, Dovecraft Little Red Robin. I'm not entirely sure. I've got a lot of scrap, well not scraps, just lots of loose papers. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it's from there, or it may be a stamping up one. So if any of you recognize it, just let me know. But this one will go perfectly over the back. And because we've got those hinges, they just finish your corners for you. So you don't need to do anything more than just add that mat. So you can see there how it covers. And then the side one, I've gone up slightly bigger so you can wrap it over the top. So, oh no, did I not do it on that one? Where's my other one? Oh no, it's this one here. That was just the scrap piece, this one here. So you'll see it fits in there and then it will fold over the top. So this one here measures four by nine. So you've got that extra half an inch which will go in there and just kind of tidy up that edge like so. All right, so just stick them down with your collar. I'm going to do that in a minute. 
and then for the little one you'll need in total you'll need eight pieces but again I've got a longer piece for that side whatever side you're not sticking against this then that will just kind of tuck in the top and then stick down there and these all measure four these are four by five and a half you'll see how they sit in perfectly on there and this one would have been four by six and a half okay so again I'll stick all those down in a moment what I've done for the closure is I've put magnetic I've put magnets on everything so I am going to probably put paper over the top of these but they've got a really nice snap now and it just kind of keeps everything you know nice and shaped so I've got two well no four in that one and then I've got four in this one and four in this one again you can see how they look there so these ones are the rare earth and they are the 16 mil let me just check I did have a spare one somewhere I just had enough of this project so I need to order some more they are yeah well yeah it's 15 it's 15 on my ruler but I'm sure they were 16 online so again I'll find that link and share those so then to do the roof because I'm going to put the rest of this all on high speed when I start putting it together but I've got the, this side here to still do so the way I do this will be the same as you, you know the way you do all of them now I used approximately these are one centimeter this is a one one inch punch and I've punched approximately 80 for each side of the large one so it's going to be about half for these ones so you'll need 80 for that whole piece and 80 for that one and then 80 each on this again if you've already done the bird box then you'll know exactly how to do this one but it's very straightforward so when you've punched them what I've done with the rulers I just curled just one of the ends there you can just see it just gives it a little bit of shape and lifts that up you don't have to do that if you want to keep them flat which I did for the bird box then that's you know fine but I do like to change things and um, you don't have to add the snow you could just add some distressed inks and just kind of let it catch on the edges there just to add a different look that way it's entirely up to you depending on what theme you're going for but you want to add glue you know, about a quarter of the way on the side that you haven't curled because that bit's going to stay free and then it's up to you how you start off I always start with one kind of coming in a bit you want to keep that straight and then I add the next one next to it there just so I can kind of line it line it up against that and you're just going to sit it next to that one and we'll cover up the tops at the very end I do that one last so then again just pop that one there and sit it next to it and you want to butt it right up to it so I'm going to go along and just do this row then I'll show you how to do the next ones under. Okay so that's that row done there and it just kind of comes up to the edge there which is fine. Then the next one again just pop some glue on the top but this time you want to pop it you want to pop it underneath where the ones above joined. Okay so you just kind of layering them up and then pop that one on there and then pop that one underneath push it right up as high as it will go and you'll start to get this effect and you just want to continue that each time and then when you get to the next one again so I can just show you this one but you then go under the next one down once you've done that row and you see how they all start to build up so I'm going to start covering all of this Okay, so I've done all that. Don't worry about the bits that overhang, so we're going to trim all that off in a moment. But next, to do the very top part, all you do is just get one of these and just trim about a quarter, just over a quarter, so a third off, okay? And then just stick it, the, sh the flat piece, along that score line. Again, so it's kind of overlapping the ones below. Let's get rid of that bit of glue, like so. So I grab one here, so there's the curved bit, just cutting about, yeah, about a third away and then 
put some glue along there and then just go along the top so it just finishes it off again I'm going to add snow along there as well like I said I've just started with it there but I plan on adding a lot more but can you see now you just get the flat edge along there so I'm going to continue that along the top okay so that is now done and then what you want to do is open it up and then just cut straight down the sides so you remove all the overhang so I'm just using the scissors just to follow the side there and it will give you that really nice finish and you just do the same on this one here like so so now that's ready for me to put the Nuvo drops on I need to just stick my um, paper on as well but just so you can see how you do it I'll just start here and just just as you normally would you know if you were using it just to make little like embellishments but you can be a bit more rougher with it you want a bit of texture and you just yeah just kind of keep squeezing it although I am moving quite a lot of it around go a bit thicker on the ends there and yeah just do that so I'm gonna and then when I've done that because it takes a little while for it to, to dry I just sprinkled it with that glitter so I'm going to get all that stuck down, I'll finish that off and uh, then we can start doing all the detail. Okay, so it's now a few days later because I've just had lots of other things that I had to sort out. So I have finished all of the roof, so that's the Nuvo drops and my glitter over the top. And you can see there, it just looks lovely and it's all dry and it's, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. Magnets are all on, I've put all the, covered all the sides and then I've started to do the windows. So what I've done is I've got these little dies here. So you get two frames and then you get the detail. And this is from the Helen Griffin, I think it's the milk carton die set. I'll link it below, but you get these two in there and they've worked perfectly. So it looks, I wanted it to look more, I put, first of all, I made my own and then I just thought, no, I don't like it. because I don't want it to look like a house. I want it to look like a factory. Like, so it's, um, yeah, it's turned out really nicely. So I just die cut first with the frame in the yellow because I want it to look like the lights are on inside. And then I then die cut the frame and the detail together. So I just put a little bit of washi tape over and went and cut it all with the silver mirrored cardstock so it looks like a metal window. Now the door I haven't done yet because I'm still thinking about what to do. I did use the, there's a door that comes with the set and um, this one here, oh and there's a little bit on the top which I've just dropped on the floor. It's got a little bit there but I don't know it just, it, you don't, it doesn't die cut all that detail and I thought it did. You see there you don't get all that because I thought I could paper piece you know different things in. It just does a door that will open and I just if it was like that with the detail piece at the top then I probably would have gone for it but it's a little bit different so that's where I am at the minute and then I've also done four on these here and I just love it I really really do now also what I've gone ahead I was just playing around with my trees and things like that I've got some lights here which I want to get on first of all so I've already put them on it's just handy to have them on so you can see you know where you're putting them but first of all I want to get this stuck down so I've got here this is a piece of foam board now I'm using this because it's already white so it already looks like snow and then once I add my artificial snow on top then you know it's it just will take to it really well so this is a piece here which is 21 by bring that one down 21 by 8 inches now that's entirely up to you because like I said you might not be doing them in the kind of arrangement that I've done but I want this one kind of towards the back ish it's about an inch down there in the middle and then these two are going to be angled because one thing I didn't really think about so I always say to people watch the tutorial first but I've got the overhang on this side which is fine but if I was to have them right up close to each other like that which I love looks really really nice you can't really open these because they catch on this here because this overhangs so what I'm going to do because I still want them obviously together is if I angle them so they're still joined and it just gives that nice shape at the front I can still open this up and I can still get into the storage so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to have them that angle but I mean you could shrink this down a little bit more if you want but I quite like I've got about an inch I move that one along there because I want to make sure they're right in the middle. So I've got about 
an inch either end from the houses here, it's off screen. There's an inch there, there's an inch at the back, and then I've got a nice space at the front here to have the trees, I want to get some little presents, I've got a little sign that says the North Pole and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to start off sticking this one down first. Now I'm using hot glue and I don't care what it looks like because I'm going to be putting loads of the artificial snow on top. Where's my bag? I've got so much stuff around me right now. I've got that bag of the artificial snow and I build it up so it, you know, it looks like a snow drift and things like that. So actually the, the kind of the, if any of the glue oozes out the side, it will look quite good because it help give dimension to the snow that I put over the top. So I've got my hot glue gun on here and I'm just gonna go along. And you can use your gel mediums, they'd be good for this because this has got quite a weight to it already. It actually, you know, it doesn't, it will hold itself in place. Um, I'm already dripping it onto my board there. And then once it's in place, I can add more glue around it as well. So on an angle, I'm going to stick that one there. So there is glue all coming out of the side, but like I said, um, I don't mind that because you're not going to see any of it. And um, I might actually put a little bit more just to add, you know, some strength to that because you know I want this to last a very long time if not forever as long as I look after it it's going to go away in a storage box you know each year that's that one then I'm going to stick the big house in this might take a little bit more uh, skill let's make sure I've just put a new glue stick in so I want to make sure that's gonna I'm going to turn this right up this way actually so it doesn't all I probably will decorate inside as well but I can do that once it's all together I'm not too worried um, you know, doing that now. Whenever you're doing gluing areas like this, leave your glue gun on for a while, make sure it's really, really hot. This one's piping hot and it does take a good few minutes for that glue to completely harden. So I have got that time to, uh, you know, glue a larger area. So stick that one down there. There we go, I can see it all squeezing out. I know it's hard for you to really see this on camera, but I'll lift it up in a moment and Again, I'm just going to run some glue all along the front there. And that's the nice thing about these kind of projects, because you're adding all that glue, um, all that snow, sorry. You know, it covers loads of things. And um, in the summertime, if you're doing these kind of projects, you can use grass and use like moss, and that will cover up glue and things like that. So yeah, I've already got some nice ideas for some summer projects. And then I'm just going to stick this last one down. Again, just going to add a little bit more water along the sides. And then I'm just going to turn this around and just add some hot glue all around the back. Okay, so if I just bring that up onto its side, because that all seems that one's still setting a little bit, but I'll bring it up. You can see. Oh, it's all looking. So I've got all that area now, so it's all nice and straight and it's all even on both sides there. So that's that. Then I've got these great big trees and I picked these up. It was a pack of four from Sainsbury's and they were on offer. So I'm going to have a big one either side because they're such big buildings. I thought the proportion of these trees work really well. And again, what I did on the, um, when I done them on the, what was it I used? The Christmas, was it the Christmas cottage? No, on my advent calendar I painted the bottom with white acrylic and whilst the acrylic paint was still wet I then sprinkled more of the artificial snow onto it. So again, you know, you don't have to add glue to them. It will, you know, the, the, the paint works really well. So again, I'm just gonna kind of stick that in there. So it's kind of up against that one. Really, at this point, I'm not worried about what the glue looks like, nothing. It's just getting everything down in place because, yeah, you can add white, you know, paint and stuff. And if you don't have this board and you're using a grey board, just cover it with some white paper. And, uh, you know, or any colour, really, and then add the snow to it. But I always find the, the, the snow that I've got works well against a white background. It really does, yeah, just make it look more real. So let's just get rid of that there. So now you can see how nice it looks with the trees. 
I absolutely love this. So what I've got now is I've got, I've also got these tiny little trees because I'll probably do a few little grouping, like clusters, you know, little things that I like to do. But I've got these here, but I've also got, I've just realized at the bottom of this drawer, I have all of these ones, which are the same ones that I used on my advent. Was it on the advent? Or no, it was on the Christmas cottage. And I'm kind of thinking I want to use them again, but I have real lights as well. So these are just going to look more decorative, but I do like them kind of hanging. And, you know, I just love that look. And it, this is all the fun part for me now. It's adding all these, these fun pieces. But I guess before I really stick that down, I need to get the real lights on. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. So these ones here I picked up from Biology, but they're just your standard, you know, Christmas lights. These are rice lights. There's, I think, this is 10 metres, or maybe five, no, I think maybe it's five actually, so I've got a lot, but I thought if I lay it all down now with the hot glue, then I can cover, you know, a lot of it with snow and things like that. So I've got so much of it here, let's just try and untangle, so you can see all of it here. There's just so much of it, but because it's rice lights, can you see, you only really see the lights, so it's, it's nice to kind of hide like the wire and what I'm thinking is I'm going to run it like all along the bottom of the house if I just bring this up on its side it's hard for you to see all this but I'm going to run it along there so I can just reheat that hot glue as long as you don't put glue on the actual light but all the metal you can just hide in that glue and I'll run them around a few times because I've got a lot so you'll see all of that lit up and then I'm going to run it probably up the sides of the house because I've got so much so that when the lights are off, you will really see all of the shape of this. So I think it's going to look really quite sweet. And then I'll just make sure that I've got the battery pack right on the back there. Just add a bit of hot glue. That's the open side, so just add your hot glue to the back there. And I'll just make sure that the last bit just feeds around to this. So again, I'm going to put that on high speed. And uh, yeah, get all that done. Then I will start hanging these lights that I just showed you of get that all in place i've got my little sign and then a lot of the other bits i'm still kind of waiting for them to arrive like little presents and things like that but i can add them all at a later time because you're all going to decorate your own thing and you'll be able to see my photos anyway but i'm going to go ahead now and get this all down okay so the lights are on and i love it i think it looks so pretty now you'll see there if i bring it up closely look at all that glue it's a hot mess but easily you know, fixed. So I've just got some acrylic. This is just the opaque Peebo brand. Have I used this one before? I think I have. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to paint over all the hot glue, but I'm not going to paint the lights, obviously, <laughs> you know, then that just uh, ruins what you've just done. And I'm also going to paint the top of this, all this brown here, because I want to cover that all in snow. So I'm just going to carefully just go in here and then when I go to put the glue over the top and add the the snowflakes, you know, it's going to be completely covered. And again, all along here. But the good thing is, is that all this glue is added a texture so that when the, you know, and like little kind of snow mounds and things like that, so I can start building up on that. But I don't want to obviously lose the lights. I've also got some down here. So I'm going to do some snow coming up here and I'll paint just a little bit around there, that bit of wire, but I'll paint it so again it looks like a snowdrift. So that's what I'm going to do now. Again, it's really hard for me to keep this in shot. I had to speed through the other bit, but you can just kind of see, I just put the paint on that bit, but look how easily it covers your glue. And don't worry if you get it on the building because you're going to cover the glue over everything, but now, I'll just bring that up there, you can see and that's what, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go along now and cover up all of this glue. Okay, so as you can see, I've been very, very busy and I've actually now finished it. Well, as far as I think I can go, there's still a few things that I want to kind of add and I'm going to talk you through everything. Basically, it's just too difficult for me to film because I'm working and it's facing like this. You're just, that's all you would see in the video. So I thought, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it all. You've seen how you get it to put together. That's the most important part. From there, you can then, you know, add your own decoration. I'm just trying to, I've got a, a um, <laughs> there we go. I've got a big roll of brown tape underneath there so I can keep it on an angle. You know, your decoration, everybody's is gonna be different. So what I'm gonna do is just talk you through the steps and then, you know, and I'll list all the measurements as always anyway in my blog. So 
I think where we got up to was I'd done the all of the rooftop and I had covered all of the sides. I had, I think I'd stuck the trees on and then really it's just the decoration. Now the chimney, that one just there, it's just the same as what I'd done for my little Christmas cottage. And that's a piece of one and a half, yeah, one and a half by two. And then just put some wadding and to act like the, the, the smoke coming out of the chimney. So that's really easy. All of these little windows are from the Helen Griffin carton die, which I think I've already mentioned. Again, that'll be linked below. These little green ones here, I just thought it, it needed something on them. So I just went, this was just a very small little one that I've got here, this one. And I just cut uh, two for each window. And then this little flower, again, is this tiny one. It's from a Sizzix set. It's so dinky. So I've used that. And then in the middle of each one, I've just put a little flat back pearl. The wreath is one of those ones that I got from the packs. I think it was from Hobby Craft. And the door, I actually ended up making myself. I couldn't find anything that I liked. So I've just got a piece of craft card and I've just, with pence, brown pencil, I've gone and kind of drawn on these four panels. You can see the other two are just behind the, the wreath there. And then just coloured them in brown. And then I've put it on a frame of mirrored cardstock, just so it kind of blends in with the window. And then I've put a little letter box there as well. Again, I'll put the measurements for this down, but I think, it, yeah, it was one and a half by two and a half, I think, yeah. But again, that will all be listed in the blog. These little Christmas trees are from Do Crafts. They're a pack, you get gold and silver, and I just thought they looked quite nice outside. These little reindeer here were from Wilkinson's, and it was their three for two offer, and they were two pound each. And then I added a little bit of ribbon around their necks, I've stuck some snow on their backs just because it's meant to be looking obviously like it's a, there's a blizzard. And then this one I put a black Nouveau drop because I didn't really like the nose that was on there. And then this one I done, I didn't have this really nice red. So I just done white Nouveau and then I coloured it in red with a alcohol marker. The lights here are the trim craft lights that I used on the Christmas cottage. So I've just used them again on here. This is actually, this kind of tinsel trim here is from a pack of pipe cleaners. And it's a great way to hide any kind of glue that you might have had. So anything you don't like, use these kind of things because it's brilliant. Now you probably have noticed that the rooftops are a lot more fuller with white. Now what I went and done is I got some white acrylic paint and I just covered more of the, the scallop edge with white paint. Then I went over and put glue on top of it all and then I dumped a load of that artificial snow. So it's got, it just looks, I really, really like it now. And you can see the lights all coming through there. When the, the main lights are really dim, actually, let me just go and turn my craft room lights off a minute. Just to give you an idea of how it looks when the lights are out. I'll share this at the beginning of the video as well. So, And also you'll notice there where the wire connects, I wrapped some more of the pipe cleaner around so it just disguises the wire so linking it to the next one so it all ties in together it's all you know it's all nice and neat so let me just put my lights back on again okay then on the trees at either end I added some of those these are the simply creative little styrofoam little beads so I just added those in there and then these I just die cut some gold stars with some mirrored cardstock now what I'm waiting for is I've ordered them and when they come I'll link I'll add the link to my blog. I won't put them in yet cuz I want to make sure they arrive and they're they're you know they're good to recommend. But I've ordered more of these tiny little presents. Now these I pinched off of an old Christmas decoration, but I want piles of presents. I want presents all around the tree. I want presents kind of piled up around the reindeer. You know, I've I just want presents everywhere. And you, I just cannot find them in the shops. I really, really can't. Some years I've found bags of them, but I've just not been fortunate. So I found somewhere online, very inexpensive. So like I said, once they arrive, I want to check the size is correct. But if I just bring it up, can you just see there? It's just a lovely little one. You can make them, but they're so small. It's just too fiddly. I thought I'd rather just buy them. So you'll notice here there's a little pile of logs. And I've put some, I've done a strip of white acrylic paint on the tops of each one. And then again, put some glue over the top and then dumped the the artificial snow just so it looks really nice and white and it really kind of shows up there. And also, can you see the little pom-poms that I've stacked up to look like snowballs? <laughs> so I really like them. And then one of the main pieces here is this one here, which says, welcome to the North Pole. And I took this from this stamp set here. 
I think it was from, yeah, Crafts Beautiful, Santa's Workshop, and it is this one. And what I've done is I've just cut off the actual pole. So it does, that's the stamp there. But I just cut that piece out. And then I actually cut in half one of my plastic candy canes. Bring it back over. One of my plastic candy canes. So the candy cane was like that. I cut that off and I stuck, there's a little bell. It's not really ringing because obviously it's stuck down, but I just thought it looked really nice and yeah, it, it just ties it all in together really well. So I am pretty much done. The things that I'm still looking for is I'd like a Santa Claus, Mrs. Claus. Now he is cute, but he just isn't quite right. He's the, he's the right height because he would fit through the door and you know, he looks the right kind of proportion to the, the reindeer and stuff. And he is really cute but it's just not quite right. So, but that, I would love to have two kind of little figures here. Awesome little, lots of elves, you know? So there are still things I would love to add to this. And it's one of those things that you can add to it even once it's done. So this is now gonna go and be displayed. I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna, you know, use the storage. I've got some candles that I need to put in there, just like spare candles, matches, all that kind of, you know, bits and pieces. And I'll probably put some treats, actually some sweets and stuff in these ones here. So it's, um and it's just if you don't use it for storage it's just a nice piece to look at so when like, like I said when all the lights are off and I've just got a lamp on I've, I've got this lit up in the tree it just all does look really really nice so I'm um, yeah I'm really really pleased with how it's turned out so that's it I don't want this video to be really long it was to really show you how to get the main shape and then from there start decorating it how you want I will give the measurements to the mats and lens side because I still need to cover that. I just think it's going to look visually, it's just going to look a bit more appealing to the eye if you've got the insides all covered. So once I cut that and put that in, I'll do that. But otherwise, it's, it's yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it. I love it. And um, yeah, it's going to be, I need to get a nice storage box for it so it's safe every time I put it away. But it'll be something that I'll bring out each year and um, enjoy. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. It's been a bit of an odd one because, yeah, you couldn't really see this being done because it was just going to be a boring video otherwise because you can't really see anything because I was working, like I said, with it like this so I could see how everything was going to look. But um, you'll see close-ups in the photos in my blog and at the beginning of this video and yeah thank you for watching. So if you did enjoy today please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel so you get to see more. See you soon. Bye!